If you come across this video because you really need the solution to this problem right now, then you can pause and read the explanation. But otherwise, you should stick around because this problem turned out to be deeper and more interesting than I expected. And while I've got some processes that do work, there are still a few mysteries to solve. We're all familiar with the Raspberry Pi. Many of you will have used them before in your robotics projects. Some of you might be considering using them in your next project. My mobile robot build series uses a Raspberry Pi 4, and in updating it for 2025, I thought I'd try using the Pi 5 instead. And boy was that a mistake. I imaged my SD card with Ubuntu for the Raspberry Pi, grabbed a 100 watt USB-C power adapter, plugged it all in, and watched me try and launch a terminal. Sometimes it's really slow, sometimes it doesn't launch at all. There is this notification telling us there's an issue with the power supply, and if you Google that, the answer is to go and buy the official power supply. So I guess go and do that. Yeah, so for robotics, that isn't gonna work. It's kind of inconvenient on the bench and completely impractical on a robot where we need to run this thing off batteries, usually via the five volt pins. So in this video, we're gonna dive deep into powering the Pi 5 for robotics and how to get the most out of this thing with both software fixes and a hardware fix that I really like. Also, I didn't realize this at first, but they're gonna keep making the Pi 4 for another 10 years or so. So if it does what you need to do at a lower power consumption, then that might be the way to go. In these four clips, you can see the Pi powered from a USB A to C cable, a USB C cable to a PD power supply, via the five volt pins, and from the official supply. All except the official supply get that notification and have issues starting the terminal. If we actually read the notification, it says that our power supply is less than five amps and that power to peripherals will be limited, although it doesn't say anything about throttling the rest of the system. This is a clue though, and we can run the command vcgencmd get config usb max current enable. And we see that this value is zero on the three slow ones and one for the official one. So clearly the Pi knows something about the power it's receiving and we can find out a bit more by booting it up without an SD card, which gets us to this diagnostic screen. Now I couldn't figure out how to get this information from a normal boot. So if you know, then please tell us down in the comments. On this screen, we can see that the USB A1 comes up as 900 milliamps. I think this is the maximum for standard USB 3, so I guess it makes that assumption. The USB C1 comes up as PD 3000 milliamps, which although my supply is 100 watts, that's actually all it can do on five volts. So this will be the Pi and the charger negotiating the power delivery and agreeing on this figure. Applying power directly to the five volt pins is unknown 3000 milliamps. So I guess that's the assumption it makes there. And finally, for the official adapter, it knows that it's that adapter and that it has 5000 milliamps available. That lines up with the text on the adapter itself. And you can see it's actually at 5.1 volts to try and compensate for the voltage drop it knows you're gonna have. Anyway, if we look at that notification again, it picks up on the ones that are less than five amps capacity and says the peripheral power will be limited. Why peripheral power? You see, the Pi has a maximum total USB out current limit of 1600 milliamps, but the Pi itself can draw over two amps while under load. Plus there might be other peripherals like the camera port. If your supply had the somewhat standard three amps of power, then you'd run out of current and maybe wreck your power supply. But before that, the voltage would probably sag and the Pi would stop working properly. So if there's less than five amps available total, then the USB current gets limited to 600 milliamps, saving an extra amp. Here, I've got a USB load tester connected with my power adapter on the left and the official adapter on the right. You can see that the left one stops just after 600 milliamps, while the official one keeps going up to 1600 milliamps before automatically shutting off power to the USB ports. If your USB power requirements are low, then you probably don't care. If they're medium, then this is extremely annoying. And if they use a lot of current, then you also probably don't care because you've already found some alternative method for powering those devices. Now, if, if all you care about is the USB current 
and only if you know your power supply can handle the load, then you can actually open the file slash boot slash firmware slash config.txt and add the line USB max current enable equals one to the bottom. From the next boot, this will tell the Pi not to restrict the USB current and you'll have access to the full 1600 milliamps. But only do this if you know your power supply can handle it. If it can't and you put it under load, you risk undervolting the Pi and damaging things. I somehow managed to kill two micro SD cards while making this video. So that fixes the USB problem, but we're still getting this notification and the terminal still won't launch quickly. So there's clearly more to this story for people who just want to use the Pi out of the box on a normal power supply. The next level up is we're going to change the EEPROM config. That config.txt from before, that lives on the micro SD card and is read by the operating system when it starts up. But the EEPROM is read by the bootloader before it loads the operating system at all. To make this change, we can run sudo rpi eprom config dash dash edit. And here we want to add the line psu underscore max underscore current equals 5000. Even though it looks like we're just editing a file, it's actually updating the code inside the eprom chip, telling it that our power supply has that much current, no matter what the power supply itself is saying. So rebooting without the SD card, we can get back into that diagnostic screen and we see the new printout says that we have a custom 5,000 milliamp power supply. And rebooting with the OS, we can see that the notification has gone away, our terminal launches quickly, and obviously our USB max current enable will still be on because of our override. But even if we weren't overriding, that value would still be a one. It seems like the main purpose of this setting is for when you're powering the Pi via the five volt pins or somehow from a high current USB supply that doesn't correctly report its own current level. When you know the current that you can supply, but the Pi doesn't, you'd set this to the appropriate value and let the Pi figure out how it should behave, even if that means throttling the system. So here I'm using a different USB-C supply that we'll learn more about in a minute. And it is fully capable of good normal behavior without any of these overrides. But when we add that parameter, it ignores whatever the supply is negotiating and taking our value. On the left, you can see the behavior with the value set to 4,000, and on the right is 5,000. The left one has the notification and the slow terminal. The right one has no notification and a fast terminal. So yeah, it's definitely limiting more than just the USB current, but I don't know exactly what. Here's a CPU stress test on both setups, same result. But the terminal works pretty well once you've launched it, so I thought maybe it was the SD card. But doing some benchmarks there produced pretty much the same results, which are in line with the packaging on the card itself. I had a brief look through DMessage and the system journal, and I couldn't find anything there either. And if I use my normal power adapter, it pulls about max two amps either way. I tried to ask about this on the Pi forums to find out what it's actually doing differently in these two states, but I didn't really get a response. So if anyone knows, please enlighten us all down in the comments. So whether it's a USB power adapter or your own power supply or battery with a voltage regulator, if you know that you're putting out the right voltage with sufficient current for what you're gonna be drawing, then you can go ahead and make that change to 5,000 milliamps and your Pi will work. I wanna show you a different solution that worked better for me, but first a quick word about the sponsor of this video, PCBWay. PCBWay wants to help you throughout all stages of the design and manufacturing process. Whether that's an initial prototype or a small production run, it could be bare circuit boards, assembly, CNC, 3D printing, sheet metal, all of these different aspects of design and manufacturing, they're there to help you. I'm working on a side project with a friend at the moment, and for this project, we needed a small run of a few different PCBs, and I was able to design them, send them off to PCBWay, and they arrived quickly and worked perfectly, allowing us to keep going on this project without getting slowed down. So if you wanna see how PCBWay can help you with your project, check out the link down in the description. This is a great solution to have, but it's really not ideal. In some cases, we're having to tell the Pi that it can use more current than we actually have available just to get basic performance. I kept looking and found another solution that worked really well for me and my application, and that was to introduce new hardware. This isn't a cheap solution, and I'd still like to have an answer that works out of the box, but I wanna show you anyway. This is the 52Pi PD Power Expansion Board, or HAT. 
You can connect a USB-C power supply that supports 15 volts PD. Mine is 15 volts at three amps, so 45 watts. And it'll output a nice 5.15 volts that the Pi is happy with. It can support up to eight amps total. That's 41 to 42 watts. So my 15 volt three amp is a perfect input. And it'll send up to five volts out the USB-C line to the Pi leaving you with around three amps left to play with via this connector or the pads on the PCB. This is great for other hardware like sensors or the control voltage for motor drivers. What's really great though, is it also has this little barrel jack for a DC connection, anywhere from nine to 24 volts. So you can use USB to power it on the bench, then drop it into your robot, hook up the battery and you're good to go. This range should be good for any three, four or five cell lithium battery, whether that's raw 18650s or tool battery packs or LiPos, or you could use a PD capable USB battery bank into the USB-C. And you can also drive higher voltage devices like motors from the exposed VIN pins. Although that feels a little bit janky to me, it might be better to use as something like a voltage monitor. And I also don't love how close these pins are to shorting on the USB shield. It's also got some switches down the other end and you can have it so that the power is passed directly through just as if you were plugging normally into the USB port or in the other mode it won't actually power the Pi until you press this momentary switch and you can press and hold it to cut power. Since I'll be using it inside a robot I'll keep it on the direct mode. If you've seen my old videos on robot power you know I spent ages fiddling with the voltage regulator and the wiring trying to minimize the voltage drop and tuning it just right and it was so difficult. This hat keeps the five-ish volt source nice and close to the Pi, keeping the voltage steady exactly where the Pi likes it. Meanwhile, we still have access to the extra current we need to run our sensors and so on. Since the Pi's USB output is still limited to 1600 milliamps, if you have some power hungry devices, I recommend using a powered hub and it's up to you whether you wanna cut the power line back to the Pi to avoid backfeeding or just roll with it. All the voltage is coming from the same source, so it should be okay, but it's not recommended. And you can mount the board on top of the Pi or sitting somewhere else nearby. You can see that when we started up with the hat, it shows as a generic 5,000 milliamps PD power supply, which of course means that it runs nice and snappy with no annoying notifications. So while it's disappointing that the out of the box power behavior on the Raspberry Pi 5 is a bit broken, it's great that we have some ways to hack around it in config and hardware like this that makes the whole experience easier. If you have any other tips or recommendations, please let us know in the comments. I hope I've saved you from wasting the same time and effort that I did on this. If so, please take a second to like and subscribe. And you can also find links down in the description on how to support the channel. Thanks for watching and I'll see you next time.